Good morning. Today we are going to read chapter 7 and chapter 8 from Ghost Town at Sundown, a Magic Tree House book by Mary Pope Osborne. Chapter 7 Ghost Story. Jack bounced in the saddle. He felt the cool night wind against his face. He couldn't tell where they were going, but he trusted Dusty to follow the others. Finally, Dusty caught up with the herd as they began to slow down. Jack slapped his reins. Dusty came up beside Slim and Annie. Howdy, said Slim. Howdy, said Jack. Howdy, said Annie. Are you okay? Jack pushed his glasses into place. Yep, he said. You? Yep, she said. That was some good riding, Shorty, said Slim. Thanks, said Jack, smiling. He even liked being called Shorty now. Where are we headed, boss? Jack asked Slim. Blue Canyon, said Slim. Okay with you? Yep, said Jack. This way, said Slim, and he slapped his horse, and they all speeded up. They all speeded up again. Slim steered the herd to the left, and soon he led them through a deep, narrow pass. Finally, they came to a boxy, open space surrounded by walls of rock and lit by moonlight. We'll corral the Mustangs here in Blue Canyon, Slim said. He got off his horse, and he helped Jack down. Annie slipped off Sunset. Take him to his ma, Slim told Annie. Annie led Sunset to the mare. In the moonlight, the two Mustangs rubbed against one another and neighed. As Jack patted Dusty's damp neck, he remembered the last two rules, praise and reward. Thanks, he whispered to Dusty. You were great. You were super great. Slim unsaddled Dusty, then handed Jack his saddlebags. Take those over to that grassy spot. We'll camp there, he said. As Jack carried the saddlebags, his boots felt stiff and tight. His legs were sore and wobbly, but he didn't mind. He threw down the saddlebags and his backpack. Then he flopped down. He flopped himself down. Oh, he was very tired. Annie joined him. They seem so happy to be free and together again, she said, gazing at the moonlit mustangs. Yep, said Jack. He lay back, using his backpack as a pillow. He looked up at the stars. If we just had the answer to the riddle, everything would be perfect, he said. Yep, said Annie. Hey, Slim, he called. I have a question for you. Shoot, said Slim. Do you know the answer, answer to this riddle? Jack asked. Out of the blue, my lonely voice calls to you. Who am I? Who am I? Hmm. Slim was silent for a moment, then said, Sorry, Shorty. Don't know that one. Jack's heart sank. That's okay, he said. We don't either. I have a question, too, said Annie. Why does the piano at the hotel play by itself? I do know the answer to that one, said Slim. What is it? said Annie. It's Lonesome Luke, said Slim. He's a ghost of a cowboy who wandered in wanders the prairie. Jack sat straight up. I saw him. I saw him, he said. I just remembered. He scared the rustlers. If he hadn't come, I never would have gotten away. Oh, yeah? Slim chuckled. Well, lucky for us. Lonesome Luke sometimes likes to help folks out. Slim threw his saddle down next to Jack and Annie and sat against it. Years ago, Lonesome Luke had a gal who he was cra just crazy about, said Slim. She couldn't take the Wild West, though, so she went back east. What happened then, said Jack? Luke went loco. Every night, he'd show up at the hotel and play the piano. He played Red River Valley over and over. Then one night, he just vanished into the prairie and was never seen alive again. His bones were found a year later, but folks say his ghost returned to the hotel piano to play Red River Valley. It goes like this. Slim took out a harmonica and he began to play a song. It was the same sad song Jack and Annie had heard in the hotel. Jack lay back down and listened to the lonesome tune. A coyote howled in the distance. The horses stirred in the dark. I better take some notes, thought Jack. But he didn't write a word before he fell asleep. He didn't even take off his boots.